Hey, welcome back to Inside the Vandals. I'm your host, Tom Purvis, and I'm joined by women's basketball head coach, John Newley. Coach, thanks for being here. Good to be here. Well, Coach, a huge, uh, another road sweep, a sweep in the Big Sky for you guys. How big was that to, to get the wins over Sac State and Portland State on the road? Well, you know, anytime you get a road win, it's, it's huge in this league. And this sweep, again, uh, was great for us because, again, we, we dropped, a, you know, a couple at home as we've gone along. So we got to catch up on the road. Four and on the road now for you guys in Big Sky play. You guys are the only Big Sky team who has not lost a road game. What's going on for you guys on the road? Well, I think we travel well, you know. Um, our, our team likes each other. They like being around each other, and I think that helps out a lot. And uh, we have some people who have been through a lot of tough road games through the years, you know. Uh, our core, Connie and Christina and Allie and those guys, Carly, they've all been through it. Uh, a lot of time, so they know what to expect. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, you go back to the 2014 year when you guys went to the to the NCAA's and didn't lose a road game in conference, and you kind of had that core that you have now. How how much does that play into it? Yeah, they're they're used to winning on the road. They expect to win on the road. You know, they don't go out with any fear on the road, and I think that's uh, that's huge for us. Against Sac State, perhaps the defensive performance of the year, holding them to six threes just one game prior to that, they had hit I think an NCAA record 25 threes. What was the focus going in? How were you guys able to limit them to only six made threes? Well, we really wanted to get out on the perimeter and, and limit their attempts. I think that's a key. You know, they're shooting such volume. Uh, I think they're averaging like 42 attempts a game, and they only got 29 attempts, which was big for us. Um, so we just, you know, and you got to not let them offensive rebound and get those kickouts, and that's where they get a lot of their threes. So those two things really came in focused and executed. You seem to be mixing the starting lineups up a bit more. I mean, you brought Allie off the bench that game. She went off for 20 points. How nice is it to, to kind of mold the lineup, and was that kind of the focus was put Taylor Pierce in the lineup, have a smaller, maybe quicker lineup against Sac State? Yeah, we wanted to get an extra ball handler in there, an extra shooter. Uh, we figured she was going to get some good looks. And then Allie could come off the bench and, and you know, dominate the paint if she could. Uh, she did that last year. So it was nice to be able to do that. You know, um, we got a lot of depth this year, which is something we haven't had in the past. So uh, I, I like being able to mix and match. Allie Ford, Carly Wilson, we already mentioned Allie, and then Christina Salvatore, all huge for you guys. Was there a performance out of those three that really stood out, or were they all just massive? I think they were all huge, but uh, I think in particular Carly, uh, at, against Sac State and Christina, um, you know, Carly was just slicing through and finishing at the rim, which was great because she got a lot of layups. And Christina was just like the rock, you know, she wasn't going to be trapped, wasn't going to throw the ball away, didn't panic, and everybody else kind of fed off of that. How was that environment? I mean, that, that gym, it's almost like a high school gym. You're packed in there, and they made a couple of runs. You guys held, off, held them off, though. Yeah, it got loud. I mean, it was really hot in there, too, you know. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't take many people to get hot in that little gym. So, um, you know, it was really loud. It's the loudest I've heard that place before. And when they made that comeback and took the lead early, you know, late in the first half, I thought, uh-oh, here we, here we go. You know, here they go. And that's what's happened to us in the past. But we were able to respond to that run and make a run of our own. Yeah, what was the key in that third quarter? Because they got it real close. You guys did still have the lead going into half. But the third quarter, you opened it back up. Yeah, we were able to break their pressure and get some great looks from three. We started off hot and taking care of the basketball. We're not giving them second shots. That was huge for us. Now against Portland State, you guys were just ripping the nets uh, from the start. 17 made threes. Is there ever an indication to you that your team is going to do that? Maybe a shoot around or they seem more relaxed? You ever, can you ever get an idea that your team is, is, could have a good night? I, I think we just have good shooters, you know, and uh, it's rare for all of them to be off at one time. It has happened, Adeline Christian being one game in particular, I still remember. But, um, you know, I, I think with the kind of shooters we have, somebody's going to get hot and they kind of feed off each other. And, you know, it helped that Portland State was sitting back in that zone. Yeah, did the zone surprise you? I mean, knowing that you guys are good shooters, it seemed like they almost kind of were giving you guys looks. Well, that's what they've done all year. They played that zone. They did against Sac State when they gave up those 25 threes. Um, so we figured we'd see the zone again. We did a lot of zone shooting the day before, ran through all our zone sets. So we were ready for the zone. You guys all are aware of, of how big this road sweep was. So, I mean, after you got that win against Portland State, what was the locker room like, the bus ride? What was that all like after these two big wins? It was great. You know, a great way to end the, end the week uh, with two road wins. Um, you've been on the bus when we've done that before, Tom. You know how it goes. And everybody was very excited coming home, man. It's, uh, everybody's feeling pretty good right now. Talking with Vandals uh, head coach John Newley right now. Up next, back at home for you guys. First up is Southern Utah. How motivated do you expect Southern Utah to be after the game at their place, where they were up 13, you guys came back, took the game away from them at their place? Uh, I think they're going to come in here uh, with a purpose. I think they're, they're going to be feeling pretty good. You know, I watched the, game, watched the game on tape this weekend, and 
Um, you know, that was a tough game for us. They, they played extremely well. They're going to be really hungry for a win. We're going to have to bring our game with those. That first quarter was kind of the rough point for you guys in that game. Went down 13. Did you see anything in that first quarter that you guys will really focus on in practice this week? Yeah, shot selection and rebounding. Uh, both were horrendous in that first quarter against Southern Utah. And we're going to have to clean that up if we expect to win at home. And then you guys have Northern Arizona after that, a team you guys already beat, obviously, but play, they were playing without Alyssa Raider, their freshman post who's a really good player. How different do you expect the game to be as long as she's in the lineup? Uh, it'll be much different. You know, um, you can't take a kid like that out of a lineup and, and expect, you know, good things. And I, I know she's a great player. You know, we've seen a lot of her on film. She's put up great numbers as a freshman. And she's going to be a force down low that, to be reckoned with. You know, Allie and Jerry and Taylor and everybody else, and Renee are going to have to be ready to play on Saturday. Finally, Coach, I mean, we've already talked about the, the importance of the home games before, but how important is it to get a home sweep here, especially after a couple of disappointing home losses for you guys? Yeah, we got to protect our home court. Uh, it's imperative that we win these next two games and keep pace with everybody else that's right above us. He's Vandals head coach John Newley right there. Coach, it's always a pleasure. Looking forward to your games this weekend. Thanks for your time. All right, and congratulations on your new uh, son. Hey, thank you. Yeah, adding the, uh, the third to the mix. Well, up next, we have our keys to the game with Alyssa Charleston. Thanks, Tom, and I'd like to send my congratulations as well on the newest addition to your family. Well, it's crazy to think that we're already midway through Big Sky regular season play, but that means that all the upcoming matchups for the Vandals are gonna have familiar faces. The men's team played Southern Utah at home just three weeks ago in a game that kept everyone at the edge of their seats. For Idaho to win this one in Cedar City, they'll have to assert their strength early. The T-Birds were 50% from three in Moscow thanks to Race Parsons and James McGee. So those high hands Coach Verlin was talking about on the contest on defense, they'll have to make another debut against the Thunderbirds. While Vic Sanders did create most of the Vandal offense last time around, Arcadi McCurchin was also really effective down low. He went five of seven with 12 points. And with Ty Egbert and Nate Sherwood both feeling good offensively as of late, the post play could have a huge impact for Idaho. The Vandals handled the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks really well here at home for a majority of the game, mostly by containing Chris Yanku to 13 points, six of those coming off of free throws. But a team with just one win in the big sky can get dangerous, and they've got a serious spark from a freshman in Mike Green, who's coming off a career road trip, scoring 23 and 22, when he normally averages just under eight points a game. But if Idaho has anything they can rely on, it's that suffocating defense, which they will need on this road trip. And while the women's team has been really good on the road, this is a homestand they need to keep pace with the best teams in the Big Sky. The Southern Utah women are still winless, but they're playing even the top teams really close, including Eastern and the Vandals themselves. This time around, the Idaho women cannot afford to play back on their heels to start this game. That shot selection Coach Newley was talking about put them at just 19% from the field in the first quarter versus the Thunderbirds 50%. But the T-Birds were not as effective when it came to keeping the Vandals off the offensive glass, giving them second chance points. So Idaho will have to bring the energy for that and running their transition game to beat SUU. And Northern Arizona will be playing with a force inside that they haven't had for a while in Alyssa Raider. She's been filling the stat line with rebounds and points. She also just led her team to their second Big Sky win against Idaho State with 23 points and 14 boards. And with Allie Ford feeling the confidence off this last road trip, expect an interesting matchup between those two. The Lumberjacks allowed the Vandals 37 three-point attempts in their last matchup, so expect a different defensive game plan from head coach Sue Darling. And with that championship road to Reno getting shorter and shorter, the stakes are only getting higher. Those are your keys to this week's games. Tom? Well, that'll wrap it up for this week's edition of Inside the Vandals. Make sure to join us next week as we look back on the two big games for the Vandals against Northern Arizona and Southern Utah. Make sure to be right here, same time, same place. And as always, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Tom Purvis, and I'll see you next time.